everyone. Good afternoon. Hope everyone enjoyed lunch. Um, I'm excited to kick off our next session. Today, we're going to be talking about building adaptive apps for Android. I'm Sarah Shamsi. I'm a product manager on the Android Developer Experience team. And later, we'll be joined by Rekka, who will share how Play can help your adaptive app reach an even broader audience on Play Store. So today, we'll cover three things. First, what it means to be adaptive. Second, why you should care and invest in adaptive today. And lastly, how to get started in building today. So first, let's dive into what it means to be adaptive. So simply put, being adaptive, or this move towards being adaptive is really about saying goodbye to the mobile-only mindset. Apps have traditionally been built for mobile form factors, and because of this, there's been constraints on resizability and orientation that make apps think that they're going to be running in a, in a small portrait window. So what we see today is most apps are built to be portrait, and they likely cannot sport various screen sizes or, or orientations. As a result, we get an experience that looks great on a regular phone form factor, but when you look at the broader device ecosystem, it may not scale well, and it may not offer the best user experience. Ideally, what we should have is something like this instead, where the app gracefully resizes to take advantage of the larger screen real estate, um, and fill the entire screen for a variety of form factors, giving the best possible user experience for your users across surfaces. So the point that we really want to drive here is that apps may not be expected to run in just a portrait window anymore. They may end up running on a wide array of screen sizes and aspect ratios. And these traditional constraints around resizability and orientation are too restrictive for where your users are today. Instead, we should be thinking about how we can build adaptively to take advantage of multiple form factors um, because the world of Android is just bigger than the regular mobile phone today. So why is this so critical right now, especially? Well, your users are already on these multiple form factors and devices. They are buying into this device ecosystem. When you think about where the form factor ecosystem and landscape is today, your user is going to be using uh, and seeing your app on multiple different surfaces. And you want to make sure that they're getting the best possible experience across all of these. It's really about meeting your users where they're at today. These are users who have invested a lot of money and time into your app. And so it's really important to give them the most exceptional experiences that will really highlight the app and the form factor. There's over 500 million large screen devices today, and these are all users that you can reach. This includes foldables, tablets, Chromebooks, and compatible cars. And this number will continue to rise. Users are also interacting with your app in multiple novel ways today. You can think about things like desktop windowing, where apps will be running in freeform windows in a desktop-like environment, and connected displays, where you can actually hook up your device to a, a external monitor and then run resizable windows there. And the ecosystem is even evolving into more novel form factors like XR with headsets and glasses. Your app should really be following these new trends and stay relevant. We're also finding that users who are on multiple form factors are the, often the, most, the ones who are most engaged. So we found that for the six top uh, streaming apps in the United States, users who own both a large screen and a phone were more likely to spend three times as much time in the app as just users who are on a phone only. And we're seeing even more apps optimized to be adaptive and work across multiple form factors. As this ecosystem continues to grow and more apps become adaptive, this will be the default user experience. And, and they're really going to enjoy this richer experience where apps really give them an immersive experience and, and work across their form factor uh, and device ecosystem. Most importantly, probably for you all, is that there's also a really great commercial upside to, uh, to building adaptive. So we found that users who are on large screens will spend five times more, roughly, than phone-only users. And guess what's even more? Users who own both a large screen and an Android phone are likely to spend nine times as much. So it's really critical for you to design with these multi-device users in mind to really help them get the most out of your app and offer the best possible experience that you can. And now I'll pass it off to Rekka to talk more about the Play uh, Store. All right. So Sarah already mentioned that uh, there's 500 million plus large screen devices um, that are outside of the, mo the mobile phone only form factor that users are using today. Now, uh, with Adaptive, 
you have significant opportunity to reach more users on your Play Store. To start with, when you publish with Adaptive, uh, you're automatically also publishing to those 500 million plus devices in addition to your uh, mobile phone. But there's more. Adaptive is a quality signal on Play. So when you opt into Adaptive, apps are ranked and featured more prominently on uh, search results pages and home pages. In addition, Adaptive apps also get priority for our editorials that are often pinned at the top of our home pages. More prominent quality badging on details pages. We already have uh, users use detail pages to make informed decisions about their installs across their devices. Today, we already showcase warning messages to users to set expectations on how certain apps or games may perform on their form factors. In addition to that, we are going to introduce exemplary badging for apps that perform really well uh, on large screens. And opting into adaptive may make you eligible for such badge badges. Form factor specific ratings and reviews. Again, this is a significant asset for users who make informed decisions on their installs. And once you opt into Adaptive, you have uh, the opportunity for, for your users to kind of give you feedback across, uh, feedback across your form factors and how apps are performing across these different devices. That's another touch point for users to engage with your apps, in addition for you to get extra feedback specifically on those form factors. Back to Sarah on how to get started on Adaptive. Thanks, Rekha. Okay, so now let's take a look at how you can get started today to build adaptively. So the good news is the platform is already meeting you halfway. How many of you are familiar with the API changes in Android 16 around orientation and resizability? Okay, okay, like a handful of people. Okay, good to know. So basically in Android 16, starting then, uh, we started ignoring screen, uh, aspect, sorry, we started ignoring orientation and resizability restrictions for apps. So these are kind of his, uh, like classically used for mobile only form factors. And with the world of adaptive, uh, like the evolving form factor ecosystem, now they're not as relevant. So we've started ignoring these constraints um, and we've actually looked internally uh, and we think that with this change, roughly 75% of the top 1,000 apps will actually uh, become adaptive and work across multiple orientations. So this will helpfully, help, helpfully push the ecosystem in the right direction. And what this means is that your users will be able to enjoy your app in multiple orientations without heavy compatibility modes that we've had to rely on in the past. Things like pillar boxing that really just did not offer the best possible experience and didn't take advantage of the greater screen real estate. And I just want to highlight that this is not a new concept. Websites, for example, have been resizable and responsive for over two decades. So it's really time for the Android mobile app ecosystem to catch up and offer the best possible experience. So with these API changes in mind, I want to highlight a variety of guidance, frameworks, and tooling that we're offering to help you get started today and help you along in this journey. So first, we have libraries for navigation in both Views and Compose to help you really build a, a large and adaptive navigation UI. Things like sliding pane layouts, dual pane layouts, list detail. There's a variety of different things that you can build here for whatever meets the needs of your users and your app. We also offer adaptive components that scale across different form factors and out of the box support for non-touch input, uh, which we know is something that a lot of apps struggle with and especially when there's a mouse or keyboard hooked up to it. And lastly, we have a variety of developer tooling, especially in Android Studio to help you get started on this journey so you can build and test iteratively. We know that getting started can often be the hardest part. You might not know exactly what design will work best for your users. You may not have enough time to actually like think about this deeply either. Um, and so what we've done is we've provided a lot of UX guidelines uh, and samples that you can use to give you inspiration for what you can potentially build. So we have both a large screens gallery, which goes deep into various app verticals like productivity or media and gives you kind of canonical examples of what UI could look like. So that should hopefully help you get some inspiration. 
And then to help you get started, we actually offer Figma samples for a variety of different layouts. So you can port your UI into that and see what works best. We also offer window size classes, which is an opinionated set of breakpoints and ways to calculate window, window metrics. By using these, you can create, you can use a standardized framework and breakpoints to design various layouts so that your app will adapt naturally and seamlessly across different resizing events. This will really help you create a standardized way to work across different form factors and window sizes by only considering kind of one API. And as mentioned before, we have a variety of uh, APIs uh, and libraries in Views and Compose to help with navigation UI. Um, we've actually tested this with a couple of developers and the feedback was, was very positive. So some developers were able to implement it relatively quickly and this will help them build adaptive quicker. Okay, so we've talked about all the different frameworks and guidelines. So how, and the good news is that we're also helping you and we have you covered for testing as well. Especially in Android Studio, we offer emulator support across a variety of different uh, surfaces. So we have the resizable emulator for a single AVD. We also offer foldable tablet and desktop emulators. So you can test out how your app will look across this evolving form factor ecosystem and different user interfaces. We also offer uh, lint rules and multi-previews for Compose apps. And then lastly, we know foldables and tablets are getting more momentum in the ecosystem. So there's a lot of physical hardware out there as well that you can use to test how your app actually looks in production. And the Android Studio things will, uh, the Android Studio features will help you uh, test in real time as well. So you can build and test as you're going along.